like to ask the last speaker, here he comes, uh, who's going to talk about validation of a phase field model for brittle fracture. Thank you. Uh, actually, this uh, is uh, the joint work between uh, two universities, uh, University of uh, uh, Zagreb from Croatia, that is the next host uh, of uh, uh, European Conference of Fracture, and also uh, my university is the University of uh, Maribor from Slovenia, it's only 120 kilometers apart, so it's very close and we have very close collaboration. Uh, this is actually the part of uh, uh, work which was done mainly by PhD student Carlo Celis, also from Croatia, and uh, Professor uh, Zdenko Tomkovic from Croatia, and uh, myself as well. So, uh <coughs> actually we want to use the numerical models when we cannot have an analytical solution. And uh, here I will talk about the, the application in the brittle material and we try to find how to modulate for example crack uh, energy and the crack uh, growth process by using the uh, <coughs> phase uh, field uh, approach. So this is already known but uh <coughs> the phase field uh, approach in modeling is uh, let's say relatively new. Uh, we actually use this uh, material DNA. Uh, here it's very hard to see but it is the crack tip here which is the, the notch and then uh, after the when you have unstable fracture behavior you get such uh, from the, the notch this is the, the by microscope uh, the, uh, the unstable crack propagation. So we want to now the establish the model and this is our collaboration here. So you know that we have the two uh, approach to to crack modeling. One is discrete when you need to model the crack and also the remesh the elements and also the next one is the diffusive crack modeling uh, which is using here in the uh, phase field model. So uh, here we need to find the energy which is necessary for discrete elements but we don't need for example to model the where the crack grows because <coughs> will be uh, respected the field the crack will follow this uh, maximum dissipation energy path. So this is <coughs> uh, here, this is just general, uh, that we have the domain and we have also the, the in, the in the this domain, uh, the point where will be the energy dissipated and uh, the C parameters in this uh, dissipating area start from zero to one. One is means it's a failure and the crack and growth. We can use also for multiple cracking on different system. Very important is the large scale parameter L. Sorry, it's here. So actually it's the thickness of this and we should formulate this parameter before we start the modeling. So here, uh, <coughs> as you know, that we have almost free energy functional. It uh, uh, consists of the formation energy and the fracture toughness. And also we have uh, here in uh, the formation energy, we have degradation function is J. And, uh, and also we have the gamma like crack density function. It is uh, 24 years ago published uh, from Francroft, Maringo uh, and uh, Bordin and they actually established this uh, uh, model for the fracture process. So what is the, uh, the, uh, uh <coughs> the length of a scale parameter? It is L. Actually, if it's increasing, then we have this uh, slope of a C function is different. So here we have the crack in gamma, discrete crack, and if you start with uh, increasing this C for zero to one, then we will have also different distribution of this C uh, respect to the L. If it's L increasing, then we have the wider the spread area. The this work was uh, actually published also with uh, the colleagues from uh, Zagreb before four years ago, and here we they established for the brittle model. It is uh, actually the uh, deformation energy which consists uh, in a strain and uh, <coughs> for uh, 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 field phase model we have uh, two approaches. One is uh, AT2, it is from Ambrosio and Totorelli established like second turn and the second one is the threshold TH. Uh, so it is different is that you determine the gamma function uh, 
by psi and uh, this uh, large scale uh, uh, parameter L. So when we have these parameters, then we can start with the modeling. So we modeling, uh, the more you can find in this paper, which was published in the engineering practical mechanics four years ago, as I mentioned. And uh, you can see that, uh, for example, oh, sorry, you can see that you have for TH function, it is like the peak and the it's a stress versus the strain. In this moment, you have uh, also psi here. It's from zero to one. And the psi function is going on the this way. Also for uh, for AT uh, model, you have, uh, the, let's say, a sustain increasing and then decreasing. So it's a different, actually, behavior. And also the psi is the change with respect to this uh, uh, the uh, cur uh, cur curve. Uh, <coughs> so what we did, we have uh, the, the tensor specimen. We want to determine the, the, the properties for the modeling. This is the actually tensor uh, specimen. Uh, which we use the RMS for measure the, the uh, elongation and displacement. So this is uh, cast by laser, and uh, we got this curve. Actually, we ho got the modulus uh, corresponding to the standard for this material. It is uh, ISTM D 63814, <coughs> and we have the tensor strength, and also we got the Poisson ratio because we can measure also the contraction by using the RMS. So this is the here, the our specimen, it is actually tried to be the, the similar like standard specimen, actually, but thickness was only 15 millimeters. And we also have uh, here the crack. Actually, we made a fatigue free cracking. But of course, this material is so brittle that you can do it only in the displacement control. Otherwise, in the load control, the crack will be immediately in, in increasing uh, the, the say, yeah. So we can see how the actually the crack starts, starts in the middle, and then grows on this way. And uh, so we have the fatigue free crack. And these specimens we did the uh, test uh, for fracture toughness. We have four specimens. Uh, it is actually two with the almost same depth, or actually all four. And then we have three curves on which is overlap each other, and one is deviated. Still, we don't know why, but it happened. And now it's interesting to find the which parameter from tensile. And also here, because it's almost the same fracture toughness, we have used the same, uh, the value it is uh, the fracture, and also from tensile uh, testing. So this is our result, which we got from the, the uh, tensile test. And also uh, we get the energy release rate here. Uh, and uh, we use for these two approach in the phase field for 82. We calculate the length scale parameter L. It is 0 0.4 millimeters. And for threshold, we calculate 0 0.21. It is the five times difference. So what we will have in this result? Now, let's see here. Uh, this is actually the both curves are overlapped. Here it is a dashed line. The red is the AT. And this uh, green line, dashed line, is 80. Actually, we got the same result. The difference is only in this formula, which we have used. But actually, it is we can use the boat for the for simulation, the let's say uh, crack initiation from this experimental result. I'm I'm sorry that we have no animation here. So I end the short conclusion. Uh, we can say that uh, is uh, possible to use different models, but uh, from the standard uh, experimental testing in phase field <coughs> is uh, actually uh, used for the correct initiation and to determine the correct, uh, uh, let's say, the fracture behavior of uh, PMM8 materials. And uh, also, uh, in uh, this case, we can also simulate uh, the with the correct path with maximum uh, uh, energy dissipation for in the, this uh, brittle materials. Thank you very much for here. Yeah.